Peace and blessings, everyone. Welcome to the Humble Servant Homestead. Guys, today I am out here standing inside of our little Kalaloo field here. That these Kalaloo, they have just taken off so much. Now, in our previous video, you know, we did a little video where we went ahead and plant our suckers. And since we planted those suckers there, it's been three weeks since we transplanted those suckers here inside of this bed here, guys. Now, a quick little rundown. Now, I've shown you how to go about getting your color leaf to look like this here. And I start from pretty much ground zero, how to go about preparing your soil. Uh, the amendments that you may need to get your color loo looking nice and green and just lush guys and so a little bit of things that I want to get into today about how I go about uh, keeping my color loo pest free and also you know just keeping them nice and strong now last night I come out and I'm just going to show you real quick what I'm doing right now uh, whenever I come out to water my Kalaloo and now uh, this that I do here in the garden I only do it every three days all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my water hose and pretty much show you what I do I did came out last night and water them and so I'm gonna show you what I do here guys okay guys so what I'm gonna be doing right now here with these Kalaloo and these ones in this particular area have been transplanted now it's been a week since they've been in the ground and so and like i said kalaloo they love water if you give them the proper water they will continue to strive and the, your stalks on your kalaloo will be very soft and tender and so if you got lock of water with your kalaloo what that does is speed up the process of the age of your kalaloo right so i just come in down below and I'm pretty much just watering the root and excuse me I think I might have a kink in my hose okay guys so now that I have that kink out of my hose now we can get back to business all right so just come down here at the base of this uh, color loop plant here and water that in real well okay now as these plants get bigger I won't be able to come in and do this here um, but what will happen is, as they get bigger, uh, the leaves will keep the moisture, you know, because the sun won't be hitting that dirt and pulling out all the moisture out. So as they get older, it will get better over time. I don't have to do this much watering like that. Okay guys, and so now that I have all these uh, Kalaloo here watered by the base of the root, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you on over here to what I will be applying right now. Okay, and so here I have some diatomaceous earth. Now, Back in the days when I did use to plant the Kalaloo, I used to use diatomaceous earth. I have nothing against diatomaceous earth, but the only thing is whenever you come out and you sprinkle that on top of your leaves, what happens is it tends to wash off and then you have to come and reapply again. And that is the reason why I went ahead and watered the base of these uh, Kalaloo plants here. And guys, uh, our customers, they absolutely do not like holes inside of their Kalaloo leaves. And so that's why we take this proceed, uh, precaution here to come out and, you know, sprinkle diatomaceous earth on top of our Kalaloo plants. Now, don't get me wrong, I still use my organic spray to spray these Kalaloo here whenever the pest is getting real heavy. Our aphids, when they come in, uh, early this morning, I did see a couple of butterflies flying around, but not that much to where that it worries me. But whenever I do see that and I see those butterflies starting to pitch underneath uh, our Kalaloo leaves, we'll come out with our, with our uh, 
neem oil and also pyrethrin okay so those are a couple of the things that we do use out here to control the pests i don't you know use that harsh chemical and stuff like that on these plants here because a lot of people they don't like that and on uh, any other plants we don't yeah, use yeah, harsh chemicals absolutely absolutely <laughs> Yeah, so what we're going to be doing right now, we're going to go ahead and sprinkle. And just be sure to watch, that, watch the dust whenever you're pouring that. Try not to breathe it in. Get it in your lungs. So now that we have that out of the way there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come on over here and simply get some diatomaceous earth in my cup and I'm going to start on the bottom here. And give a little sprinkle bottom and also it's also good that you get the base on the ground with the diatomaceous earth because also that also helps to prevent the slugs that will come in and also get on your leaves okay and so we're gonna go ahead sprinkle a little on the ground why I did this early this morning here is because yes we do have a little bit of dew that is still on the leaves and that helps to get the diatomaceous earth to stick on the leaves guys and so you want to come out early in the morning and do it so that way it can stick but as y'all can see I have my work cut out for me here this morning and it is real nice morning so that is good but none of the less guys that's what I wanted to do, bring y'all in real quick. So let me go ahead and powder all these hallelujah leaves here and we will bring you guys back shortly. Okay guys, and so after spreading all this diatomaceous earth out on these hallelujah leaves, it did take a little bit of time. I said it probably took me about an hour or so, me and my wife to come on out and we sprinkle all this stuff here but nevertheless it should be good until it rains that's the beauty about this right here and that's why I show you how I go about watering these plants here so another thing is because you're using diatomaceous earth it's a powder once it rains guys you want to make sure you come back and reapply as soon as to stop raining and you have no more rain coming in the forecast come out and reapply because if you don't do that that's all those bugs are waiting on this stuff to be off the leaves and they will come and lay those eggs and be gone you probably won't even see them until you come out and your leaves are damaged but nonetheless that is it right there uh, these color here have a little bit more time to go before I harvest them um, Typically, I usually let them get to about yay tall. The stalks get about that big. I mean, but I will take you guys along with us once that time gets here. And so, none of the less, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by the Humble Servant Homestead. If you like the content you get here today, just shoot a big thumbs up, like, subscribe, and also share this video right here. I believe I did put a lot of knowledge in there to help you with your Kalaloo. So share it to someone that grow Kalaloo that it can help them. Okay? So, peace and blessings to each and every one of you out there. And remember to put a smile on your face and just be happy.